Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of June 28, 2021. This week I get four topics. The first one is we have new production photos from the DJI Mavic 3 that get leaked and we'll talk about those. There's a new Parrot drone, we'll talk about that as well. There is a new software from Skydio, it's called 3D Scan and it's actually pretty impressive so we'll talk about what that does. And then lastly we'll talk about two people that uh, get prison time for trying to smuggle something contraband into a prison using drones. So let's get to it. <laughs> And the first story this week is two new drones that just came out this week from two different companies. We've talked about one in the past, the Mavic 3. We have new images that are coming out uh, from the production. These are actual images. We also have a Parrot that came with uh, a new drone, the Parrot Anafi AI. And that's a really interesting concept because this is kind of a novel idea that we haven't seen before. So uh, who better to join us on the show to talk about these new drones than uh, Haya from Drone Excel. So Haya, welcome to the show again. Thank you for having me, Greg. Uh, good morning. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm sure you've been busy this morning because these images just popped out this morning from the Mavic 3. So um, what, what did we find out? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because these images were sent to us uh, this morning straight from China and they're well ahead of us uh, in terms of uh, the time difference. So we have to get, have to get up early and, uh, and get these ready. Um, they're basically images that show the body shell of the uh, Mavic 3 drone. And as you can see, they match up with the earlier images and sketches that we uh, were able to publish uh, in the previous months. Uh, a couple of things stand out. If you look at that second image, you see that at the front of the drone, there are two big holes in the bodywork, uh, which obviously are going to be for forward facing obstacle avoidance sensors. Sensors. Now, we know from the Mavic Air uh, 2S that those are double, right? We have two that face more upwards and two that face more forward. Uh, as you can see on this drone, they face forward and outwards slightly. We suspect that the, the piece that kind of clicks on the, on the front of this um, body frame might also be tilted upwards slightly. So we might see just two obstacle avoidance sensors at the front, but positioned in a way that they have a wider field of view, uh, both horizontally and vertically, which would make a lot of sense because then you have better obstacle avoidance when you fly at higher speeds. And that's something that uh, the DJI pioneered with the Air 2S. Uh, we would not be surprised to see that same concept and that same capability carry over to the Mavic 3. And also we see that the, the, the battery compartment is completely different than what we've seen before. We used to have a clip on top for most of the Mavic series. Uh, now it looks like more like a Mini 2 design maybe with the battery sliding in the back. Yeah, it seems that DJI is favoring that design. Uh, we're not exactly sure why, but I guess it's, it's just more practical in terms of how they design the drone and how much of the, the internals you can fit in a small space. It's more aerodynamic. Uh, it seems to be that the battery this time is, is slightly bigger than what we've seen before. So we're expecting the Mavic 3 to have a superior flight time and battery life compared to the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom. But yeah, it slides and clicks in from the back. Um, I guess that's going to be the, the new design going forward that we'll probably see on all uh, future DJI drones in the, in the Mavic range, if you will. And that's also what we see on other drones like the, um, the Hotel drone where you know you slide the battery in the back. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I see there's also an opening on top of the sensors. Uh, it almost looks like uh, maybe they're going to put uh, lights like Knight Rider on top. Is this for airflow, you think, that little hole? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, we expect the Mavic 3 to be able to produce much better quality in terms of video recordings and also uh, still images. Uh, with that, of course, comes the increase in, uh, in um, processing uh, capacity and those processors uh, run hot. So you need to have a good airflow to cool them down. Uh, this air scoop, I, I imagine, is mainly uh, intended to make sure that the internal components don't overheat and that you are able to keep flying and keep recording in 4K or maybe 6 or 8K. Okay. And no indication on the camera from these pictures, right? No, we haven't. Uh, no, not from these pictures. As you can see, the, the, the location at the front where you would typically expect the gimbal and the camera, there's nothing here to show in these photos, unfortunately. There are still stories flying around about getting possibly a camera with interchangeable lenses. I know that a lot of people, including myself, would, uh, would be very, very interested in something like that. Alternatively, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a faster zoom lens. So let's say the Mavic 2 zoom, but then with a better lens with a also a larger sensor so that you maybe get the best of both worlds and not have to interchange lenses. Uh, that seems like more of the, the Mavic-like approach where you have a single drone that basically is, is, is almost perfect for any kind of circumstances, at least for most consumer and prosumer uh, drone pilots. Interchangeable lenses, I guess changes the whole the whole um, 
idea and concept of the drone and even though a lot of people would like that i think overall speaking that's probably a much smaller part of the uh, dji target audience so i think if anything i would expect it to be a fast uh, zoom lens which hopefully comes with a wider zoom range than what we've seen on the uh, the dji 2 zoom and if that's the case uh, i would still be very excited to be honest you know i had an interesting thought that you mentioned all of this because you and i have discussed this at length in the past in in podcast and off the air you know we talked about how the manufacturers are are making their it, it looks like they're kind of concentrating especially dji you know going from the phantom platform to the inspire platform down to pretty much the mavic and then may, making the mavic kind of the platform for everything and i, I was listening to randall uh Warner from um, for the new CEO of Hotel, and, and we had him on the show, you and I and Kara, and he had mentioned something during our show, and he mentioned something during another interview that I listened to uh, from Original Dobo, and he had said um, that, he said, what's the difference between uh, a, a consumer drone and a professional drone? And the answer is the payload. You know, the, the, what, what, what you, you carry and the camera that you put on is the, really the difference. So the drone in itself could be the same drone, but then changing the lenses and changing the payload. And that's kind of what Hotel has been doing with their drones. And it, it's kind of interesting that you mentioned this with the interchangeable lenses, and maybe this is where we're going, having one platform, and then you can do whatever you want with it by changing the, the, the payload on top of it. I, I think this is an amazing idea, quite frankly. Uh, makes it a lot cheaper to just buy a payload rather than buy a brand new drone. Yeah, I think that would make a lot of sense. And in a way, we've seen that with the uh, Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't done in a way that the average consumer would be able to easily swap payloads out, but you could swap them out if you wanted to. And there's been videos that, that basically talked you through the different steps of how to achieve that. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense for DJI to come out with a Mavic 3 that would have different payloads where as you become more professional and the needs for, for different lenses and different cameras uh, come up, that you would still be able to fly the same drone. I think that would perfectly fit into DJI's overall um, marketing approach, if you will. Um, going back to what you said about the Phantom, I think the Mavic has been so popular because it's a foldable and compact drone. And I think what a lot of people who fly drones still appreciate a lot is to be able to carry the drone in a backpack, travel, go places, go to places where you want to take those uh, amazing yep. photos and videos, and then have a drone that's, that's easy to take along with you. And uh, as, as great as a um, drone the Phantom 4 has been, and it's been really good for certain applications, but in general, I think what a lot of people uh, had a problem Problem with is that it came in a big suitcase the batteries are big and heavy the drone is bulky it's not easy to travel with and I think that's where the Mavic has always won out basically uh, so to now yep. come to a Mavic 3 that is still foldable and light and, and somewhat compact and easy to travel with but gets you uh, let's say the video and photo quality better than what you would uh, expect from a Phantom 4 uh, would be a breakthrough and if, if it even comes with interchangeable payloads then yeah we're then we're in a whole new level yeah, yeah, we've we've predicted on on the show before the the death of the Phantom series to be replaced by the Mavic. So I think this this might be it. Um, so I think that the question on everybody's uh, mind has been for a long time: When? When are we going to see this drone? What? What do you think? We're still hearing uh, late August, early September. Um, we haven't had a firm date. Uh, the Mavic 2 series were originally planned for mid-July and then got delayed because of the whole video issue that they had uh, and was uh, launched, I believe, late August. So it would be in line. Um, I, I'd be super excited to see this drone come to market at the end of the summer. Uh, I hope there's not going to be any delay or anything other crazy going on that would delay this drone from being introduced uh, late summer. And uh, <laughs> I'll have my wallet ready, so to speak. <laughs> well, you you know you're getting one. Uh, the um, the the other piece of news this week was uh, Parrot, the French company, released a new drone as well. It's called the Anafi AI. And looking at the images, we're playing them in the background right now. Uh, very very different design from what we've seen from anybody else, which is really interesting. Uh, the 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 big selling point for this drone apparently is the fact that it's a 4G drone, which means that you will be able to control this using a 4G connection. And uh, this is. Kind 
kind of novel uh, in, in the industry at the moment. What, what else have you found about this drone and, and what else is kind of, uh, well, cutting edge, new, something that we haven't seen before? Yeah, uh, Henry Sidhu, the uh, CEO of Parrot, is always, uh, even with the launch of the uh, original Parrot and Avi, uh, was very focused on imitating uh, design features, if you will, from insects. So that's, that's kind of where the design comes from, even with this uh, Parrot and Avi uh, AI, which stands for Artificial Intelligence, uh, by the way. Um, I don't know. I mean, on paper, it looks really good and it has some really unique features and we can talk about that in more detail for sure. Uh, I think the real question is going to be how will it actually fly and how will this operate in a real world and in, in real life circumstances? And if it's, if it's as good as it sounds on paper, then this might actually be quite an amazing drone. Uh, it definitely has some brown, groundbreaking stuff going on with the 4G uh, connectivity. That's new. Um, however, uh, the original Parrot and Avi uh, was presented also with a lot of uh, fanfare, but in reality it turned out to be kind of flimsy and plasticky and not as robust, I think, as a lot of people would, uh, would expect a drone to be, especially when we're talking about drones that are being used uh, repeatedly in commercial environments. Uh, now we're talking about people who might be inspecting cell towers, transmission towers, pipelines, people might be using gloves because they're in uh, colder conditions, so the, the expectations and the requirements that you need for a commercial drone uh, are quite a bit higher. It needs to be quite a bit more robust. It's going to be flown a lot more. There's probably more things that are going to happen to it, whether it's high wind, dust, rain, uh, you name it. And um, I think that's where we'll have to wait and see how good this drone really is. Um, going back to the 4G connectivity, that's that's awesome because basically it would allow you to have an unlimited range as long as there is a 4G network in place. Now, of course, you're not allowed to fly beyond visual line of sight, so there's there's restrictions there. Uh, maybe at some points in certain scenarios, people will be able to fly drones beyond visual line of sight. Think of uh, first responders, but also people that do uh, uh, disaster response or inspections. In those kind of scenarios, having a 4G drone would of course be beneficial. The question is what happens when you don't have a 4G network? Uh, in that case, it, it yep. defaults back to Wi-Fi and we don't know what the Wi-Fi range will be. I mean, the original Parrot and Navi had a very limited Wi-Fi range. Uh, I think they set a couple of miles on paper, but in reality it turned out, it turned out to be half a mile to maybe a mile, which is not always sufficient. Uh, in this case, you might wonder if you fly on 4G and especially when you get behind another structure, if you fly beyond visual line of sight, but now you lose your 4G network, will you still be in range of Wi-Fi? And if not, does that drone automatically come back or what happens? So there's a, there's a lot of questions still um, that need to be answered. And I think we'll have to wait to see when actual professional drone pilots get their hands on these drones and, and fly them in different circumstances uh, to see what they tell us at that point. And, and what about the specs? The, the, the specs look like a 4K camera, 6D, kind of what we've seen before. Anything noticeable in the specs? Um, yeah, they say uh, a 48 megapixel uh, half inch quad Bayer sensor and the benefit would be that this sensor has such a high resolution that uh, Parrot claims that you can fly one and a half times higher and still get photos that have the same quality as if you had a one inch 20 megapixel sensor. Now, that might be true. In theory, this would allow you to fly higher so you cover more ground so you can cover a project faster. We're talking about uh, photogrammetry and, uh, grammetry and 3D modeling here specifically. However, what we've seen with high-res uh, sensors that are smaller is that they're much more sensitive to having enough light. So in worse lighting conditions, let's say there's overcast or it's later in the day, then this might not work, be, and this might not work as efficient. But maybe on a sunny day, this actually is a benefit and it will allow you to, uh, to get your, your uh, missions completed faster. Um, it has a 24 so mil... Go ahead. Yeah, let's talk about this because I think this is interesting. Uh, so it is a 48 megapixel. It's not a 12 megapixel that does 48 megapixel uh, photos like we've seen before. Is, is that the way you understand it? That's the way I understand it, yes. I don't think there's any trick or tr trickery going on with this one, um, but we'll have to see. Yeah, 48 megapixel on a half inch sensor, that's a ton of, of that's the, the pixel density is huge. So yeah, uh, low, low light condition is gonna be, it's gonna be noisy, it's gonna get hot pretty fast. Uh, that's that's gonna be interesting. Okay, so sorry, cut you off. What was the other, the other stuff? The other no, stuff. I, what I was gonna say is we've seen the same thing, what was it, with the DJI um, Mavic Air 2? 
where you were able to quadruple basically the resolution as well and it did go at the expense of uh, of noise so your noise increases especially in low light conditions which is understandable because you have such a high resolution on still the same size sensor so what well, again this is it sounds great on paper the question is how is it in real life um what I was going to say next, it is a 24 mil lens. It has a fixed f2.0 aperture and a 73 degree field of view, uh, which is all fine. Um, they have three axis mechanical gimbal and a three axis electronic gimbal stabilization. So you should be able to get really smooth video footage with this drone. And if that's the case, of course, that will be awesome. Um, in true Parrot and Avi fashion, your gimbal is able to point downwards 90 degrees and upwards 90 degrees. Uh, again, a unique feature. If you're inspecting bridges, you're flying underneath a bridge, you can look straight up and get a clear vision of, uh, of the structure. So that's definitely uh, an advantage. Uh, 4K video, 60 frames per second, and high dynamic range 10 camera. So in theory, again, you should be able to deal with low light conditions depending on how well the HDR component works. Uh, for this drone. Yep, and, and no pricing at the moment and no real uh, release date other than sometimes in the next six months, I think. No, the only things that we haven't discussed really is uh, two times digital lossless zoom in oh, yeah. 4K, uh, 32 minutes flight time, 34 miles per hour, and the drone weighs slightly less than two pounds. So all that stuff is good. Uh, they say to expect this drone in the second half of this year. We don't know if this drone is going to qualify as a blue SUAS drone. Um, the, I mean, the way they position it, you would think that that's something uh, Parrot would want to achieve. We haven't heard anything about that. It's, it's a drone that's really meant for the commercial market. And if you remember, I think it was a year and a half, maybe two years ago, that's, uh, that Parrot mentioned that they were going to move away from consumer products and consumer drones and really not, uh, yeah. not focus on that anymore. Um, second half of this year, sometime in the fall, I would expect this drone to be quite expensive, to be honest. Uh, it's a commercial product. We know that prices are already higher in that, uh, in that segment. Uh, if they aim for blue SUAS, uh, those drones tend to be even more expensive. So I don't think this drone is gonna be cheap uh, by any means. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see also if they stick with the uh, production schedule and, and release dates. Um, well, I think this is all the time we have this week. But Haya, as always, thank you so much for uh, bringing all of this information. And then uh, we're going to move on to our next uh, segment this week. Thanks, Haya. Thanks, yeah, Haya. thank you, Greg. The second story this week is Skydio is releasing their new software called 3D Scan. Now they had this big video on YouTube. It was kind of like a, an Apple product release, an Apple keynote, if you've ever watched one of these where the CEO talks and then sends it to other people in the room that worked on the project. They kind of explain the whole thing. The, the bottom line is this, th this software is designed for the Skydio 2, it looks like, and I'm sure maybe their other platform as well. And the idea with the software is that you can kind of box the drone into a virtual box and then have the drone fly inside of that box to scan an object and then create a 3D scan out of it, hence the name 3D scan, right? And, um, and it was actually pretty cool for them to kind of show how you set up the ground, you set up the, floor, the ceiling, you set up all corners of your virtual box, and then you let the drone kind of fly inside of that box and it captures all different um, pictures and all different angles in order to create that model. So. Uh, with that being said, the, the, the software is available for about $29.99, looks like, per aircraft per year. It's designed to create photogrammetry scans in, uh, of building, accident scenes, uh, bridges, and, and you name it, and a bunch of other things. So uh, really interesting technology. The results were pretty cool. If you want to see the video, we'll put it down in here, and then you'll get a better idea of uh, kind of what that looks like. The next thing this week is uh, two men get sentenced to 12 months in prison after they admitted that they were planning on using a drone to smuggle contra contraband into a Georgia state prison. Now this is really interesting and I think this might be the first of its kind and maybe there are others but I'm not aware of them. They were sentenced after they pleaded guilty to owning an unregistered aircraft and they were planning to operate or attempted to operate. That's what the kind of, this is the, the, the language that came from the justice.gov website. So uh, they were, they pleaded guilty for operating, attempting to operate or allowed to operate by another person. I thought that was a really interesting charge and, um, and they pleaded guilty. The second person looks like their brother's 25 and 27 years old 
killed in Georgia. Uh, the, the other person was sentenced to 12 months in prison, in, in federal prison, after pleading guilty to serving or attempting to serve as an airman without an airman certificate. So it doesn't even look like there's anything related to the contraband in itself. It looks like it was all about operating the aircraft or, or attempting to operate the aircraft. Uh, I find it very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment about this story. It's kind of a, a bizarre thing. I'll put a link down as well to the uh, justice.gov uh, website where you can find more information about the story. All right, one more thing this week. Flight Fest is right around the corners. Our friends at Flight Test have this event, uh, July 15th to the 18th. It's a, a big party for anything that flies and anything that flies with a remote control. There's camping available, they have concerts, they have food, they have uh, you name it. You want to fly RC planes, you want to fly quadcopters uh, or, or multi-copters, head over there. It's in Ohio. It's, uh, it's, it's several days of fun. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend this week and I'm kind of sad about it. Uh, but but uh, next year, I definitely will be there uh, flying all sorts of things. So if you want more information, uh, take a look at their website, flightfest.com. All right, this is it for this week. Like, subscribe, comment, do everything that you do usually. Uh, as always, uh, we get tons of comments every week, but I, I love to read all of them and, uh, and reply. Uh, the good ones and even the bad ones sometimes. Uh, we have a lot of good ones, not so many bad ones. And, uh, and if you like the airplane news updates, uh, check out on the other channel that we have. We talk about United that's buying new aircraft. We talk about Southwest Airlines that's canceling a whole bunch of flights. Uh, TSA is resuming self-defense training for flight crew, which is a bit of a sad thing. And then a, uh, a man jumped out of a taxiing SkyWest jet. Uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Just shaking my head right here. So fly safe and I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.